you're talking about enlightenment. You're talking about ego death. You're talking about all these things where it's like the people who actually brought this to the table were people who don't even take the psychedelics, like the yogis, the uh, Buddhists, and all these other people. Man, it's when someone takes uh, one of these things, an intoxicant, we just call it an intoxicant, all right? but we can refer to it in all the different subcategories that Faya mentioned in the beginning. But what it's doing is it's altering our neurochemistry. Like our neurotransmitters, it's altering the levels that of which they are expressing or deeper or suppressing themselves, which causes you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very nice description of what will be in Jannah, you know, and then he says, Which one of your Lord's favor will you deny, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, some kind of delayed gratification. So for, for us as Muslims, of course, we're not perfect. We have so many mistakes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But the overall understanding is that we try to wait we try that doesn't mean that we're not going to eat or you know have intimacy in this world yes but it's not like open and do whatever up for grabs right so as the prophet said dunya sijinul mu'min wa jannatul kafir right this is kind of like a restriction a jail for the believer because you can't just do what you want whenever you want you know we can't just eat what we want we can't just eat whenever we want when it's ramadan you cannot right uh, you have to pray. You cannot just sleep whenever you want to. There's certain restrictions, right? That's for the non-Muslim. He does whatever or she does whatever the heck they please, whenever they please, right? Where it's like God says, okay, you can you can eat anything you want. You can have anything you want. Just don't have from this tree. Don't have the forbidden fruit. And it's like people will say, oh, well. That's right. So in, in Jannah, you have all these beautiful things. Yes, wine. Yes, there is, uh, you know, spouses, uh, women. Yes, there is uh, food. Yes, there is fruits. You know, you just recline, you just pull, your, your, it kind of comes down to you. There's everything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to T3M. We are still joined with Gabriel. Oh, Romani. And brother, you're looking fresh today. Assalamu alaikum. Ya kawallah. Wa alaikum salam. man. Get that stretching. Got to, man. You got to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Allah. It's uh, 6 p.m.-ish where we are right now. I just got my first meal of the day. And I know Anho got a meal recently, too. What'd you eat? I arroz con andule. Con picadillo, maduro y empanada. Muy bien, muy bien. Hey. <laughs> hey man, what you eat today? I haven't eaten in hours, man. I have to get my second meal in. Damn, so, are you guys, are you guys uh, fasting? Intermittent fasting or what? Um, I'm doing intermittent fasting, yeah. I'm supposed to be in a calorie surplus. This is not good for me, man. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm just eating. Make you a diet plan. I'm just eating. Yeah, I'm his coach <laughs> right now. Yeah. Damn, yeah. yeah. I'm his religious coach and he's like my nutritional coach. Mashallah. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be 7 a.m. in Malaysia, serious. right? It is 7 a.m. Malaysia. 7 a.m. So are you Mashallah. currently in a fasted state or did you eat breakfast? Uh, I didn't eat yet, no. Alhamdulillah, man. Drink some water. That's the way to that. go. Do you usually water, do that? Water with lemons. Is that what you usually do? Um, okay, yeah, basically what I do is I try to stop eating around um, 8, 7.30, 7, depends, 8 p.m. And then try to not eat for about 12 to 13 hours. Like, So I have my breakfast maybe like 9 a.m., something like that. So, so, so kind of like intermittent like, fasting, kind of like intermittent it's fasting. It's kind of, but not so, not so, yeah. uh, you know. So not so strict. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah, mashallah, mm. bro. And what's your diet like, bro? Just out of curiosity. Okay, I mm, there is no diet, just a third. I just follow that sunnah, so one third. Like I don't overeat. I eat everything. Mm, try to go low, not low, but cut some of the carbs that are unnecessary. Like I try to just keep the carbs low and the sugars low. That's it. But I still do. I still eat bread. I love bread. You know, Romanian. <laughs> but because uh, I feel, in my experience, I'm dealing with a lot of diets, a lot of people, a lot of counseling. 
uh, a lot of people change their, of course, their life habits. And if people do that, that's great. If they can keep the the, the discipline, alhamdulillah, they find purpose in that, that's great. You know what I mean? Alhamdulillah. So I'm not going to refute that. Uh, but it's just, I felt that a lot of people quit after some time. It's, you know, so they do, they get very religious about it. They get very strong on it. Mashallah, one month, two months, and they're like, man, you know, they just have that one slip and then it's just, it's finished, you know. So for me, I, I everything, as, as long as halal and tayyib, as long as I don't eat late at night and I exercise enough and um, just, yeah, just try to do that night fast. Like I just let my body rest throughout the night, at least 12 hours or so without eating. There's no eating like late. Sometimes I mean I have to be honest, you know. Sometimes like my wife will make something crazy at night, and I'm like, ah, you know what, cheat day. <laughs> so it's all good, like, but but it's okay, like it doesn't affect me, you know what I mean? Like alhamdulillah. So mm-hmm. it's good. I'm 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 very comfortable with uh, with what I do. Alhamdulillah. So Gabriel, how mm-hmm. do you know when you are getting full? Okay. Um, so obviously you cannot measure like a third, like exactly, right? Yeah, so a tholoth, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah, a tholoth in, in Arabic, it basically like it's an estimation. So you should never feel like, as the hadith process, and you should never fill the stomach, right? So that's the worst uh, vessel that you can fill, as the Prophet said. And um, you basically, yeah, you just don't, you never have that pressure on you right where you're like oh, oh, oh you know you kind of recline back and you're like man this is too much right so you can estimate your body your body kind of tells you okay like i'm feeling now that i'm you know it's like wow you know it's too much so i think when you when you lay back and you're just like oh that was good right that's like you're full right so you can you estimate you know so you eat enough but you know a portion you know you drink water and, you know as the process of said the third for air you breathe some people like literally don't you know, they don't breathe. They just like, you know, binge eat, you know, yeah, so yeah. just, just take it easy. Like don't, you know, there's so no... do you, do you eat slow? Do you eat fast? Do you eat moderate? Uh, I, I guess um, that's one of my mistakes. I do eat quite fast just because of the, I'm kind of in a rush a lot, which is bad. It's not good. It's not good to eat fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like I do travel a lot sometimes. I will find myself eating in a car sometimes here and there. So it's not good. That's that's one big mistake. So my advice to people is like kind of take it easy, you know, but don't spend like an hour eating, you know, but just, you know, if you're eating not so much, you're eating nice portion, you can finish it uh, quite fast, but don't rush, you know. Yeah, but I love food. I mean, food is good, you know, as long as you 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 eat to to live. But uh, you can also enjoy some of the food, like the process. I used to love the you know the shoulder of, of you know of the sheep and you know certain foods that he loved. You know what I mean? That he liked. So there's this is like it's organic, you know. When you look at the life process, and like it was not like a monk life, you know. It was just organic. Like everything was organic. Like you just lived, you know. It's just mm-hmm. normal. Mm-hmm. There's no mm-hmm. monk type of behavior, you know. It's like he liked things. If he had it, he ate it. If he didn't, he didn't. You know, if he didn't like something, he didn't eat it. He didn't criticize it. But Hadith says that he just didn't, he just left it, you know, and it didn't eat it. Because many people would offer him things and whatnot. So, but he would never be like, oh, it's not good. I don't like this. You know, sometimes we do. Yeah. So it was just very, very organic, like very nice. Mashallah. Mashallah. You hear left and right about uh, how the fruits of this world are not going to compare to Jannah. Uh, the foods, the drinks. So why don't you go a little bit into that if you have some type of, you know, research and study on that? Because I'm sure there are a lot of viewers that don't know. They're like, what do you mean? There's going to be wine? There's going to be you know, drinks? There's going to be fruits? Yeah, it's going to be sex. <laughs> 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 I know that I remember talking to some Christians, you know, we were doing a, a discussion at the university. And... Um, it was like a debate, right? And their basically their, their accusation was like, my God, you know, in the Quran, it says that you'll have Horlain and you'll have this and there's all this physical type of experiences in the heaven. How is that heaven should be spiritual? I'm like, wait, I said, should. Who says what should be in heaven? Who are you to, t- you know, to tell us what should be in heaven? I said, what's your evidence, you know? That's a beautiful thing about Islam, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges humanity. You know, bring your truth, your proof 
if if you are truthful, right? Don't just say stuff, you know? People say stuff. I think it should be like this. I think Jesus is God. I think, you know, this is that. And I'm just like, you think that's one thing. Good. You think, therefore you are, right? <laughs> but that does not make correct. You know what I mean? So they're saying stuff like, wow, you know, you guys can have wine in there. And, you know, as, as one of the, uh, the duat said, he says, yeah, we have it in Jannah. You guys have it in this world. You're not going to have it in Jannah <laughs> or in the after. You know what I mean? Some people, like they talk about like, oh, why is there, you know, or food or wine or this or that in Jenna. And like they have a problem with it. But in this world, they don't have a problem taking it. You know, and they're they're over overdoing it, you know, committing zina, doing all kinds of stuff and thinking it's okay. Right. So for us, we there's a certain discipline that we have in this in this dunya, in this world. And because the effects of it in this world are negative in many cases right as for jannah we know the prophet sallallahu told us very clearly described in detail that the wine of jannah is not like the wine in this world there's no intoxication and that's why khamar it's called khamar okay from khimar something that covers your intellect okay so there is no such effects in jannah there is no such effects of overfilling there's no effects of there's just all those negative things do not exist in Jannah. It's not because we say so or we're trying to justify. It's because the Prophet clearly explained in Surah Rahman, which is a very beautiful surah, 55 in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very nice description of what will be in Jannah. You know? And then he says, Which one of your Lord's favor will you deny? Right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, some kind of delayed gratification, like are you going to get this reward? And we know there are so many psychological studies, um, what are called longitudinal studies that have followed children who are offered, I think it's called the uh, the marshmallow, uh, you know, experiment where kids were given, you know, he said, you can have one, uh, you know, one now or like three later, right? And they keep like, no, I want no one now, right? And most of the world is is hedonistic, right? They want to satisfy their desires now. Right, but they don't understand what can be the consequences of doing that. As for those kids who delayed the reward, uh, what happened is this, the the researchers followed them throughout their life, and they found them to be much more successful in making choices, career stuff like that. Right. So for for us as Muslims, of course we're not perfect. We have so many mistakes. May Allah want to forgive us. But the overall understanding is that we try to wait. We try, that doesn't mean that we're not going to eat or, you know, have intimacy in this world. Yes, but it's not like open and do whatever up for grabs, right? So as the Prophet said, dunya sijinul mu'min wa jannatul kafir, right? This is kind of like a restriction, a jail for the believer because you can't just do what you want whenever you want, you know? We can't just eat what we want. We can't just eat whenever we want. When it's Ramadan, you cannot, right? Uh, you have to pray. You cannot just sleep whenever you want to. There's certain restrictions, right? That's for the non-Muslim. He does whatever or she does whatever the heck they please, whenever they please, right? So that's the, the, the difference, right? So in, in Jannah, you have all these beautiful things. Yes, wine. Yes, there is, uh, you know, spouses, uh, women. Yes, there is uh, food. Yes, there is fruits. You know, you just recline, you just pull, your, you, it kind of comes down to you. There's everything. And then as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, only the names of these things are like kind of what matches uh, gender right? so Allah says why because that's there's a connection like in education you make connections between different knowledge so you can understand better so there's a connection between a name so we understand that there is something wow you know bananas taste good wow a mango tastes amazing right can you imagine that the ones in gender are going to be so much more that only the names apply like so right your mind right away you're almost like oh my god I can't wait right so you say, oh, my God, I can't wait. You kind of like, you know, so then I don't have to really rush in this dunya or make a mistake in this dunya. I can just try to hold myself and just take it easy or just take what's allowed only from what Allah has given us. Because, again, Allah doesn't allow us to starve in this dunya, you know, because people think like, again, oh, my God, Islam is so difficult. There's so many rules. Actually, if you think about it, there is so many rules. Actually, by default, everything is halal, except if Allah or the Prophet said so, right? That it's not. 
so yeah it's it's a great thing i mean i'm looking forward to it. i don't know about other people but it's, it's great you know <laughs> so bro what about people who would uh raise the counter argument saying okay well if in jannah there's going to be these things but we have it here right now why not just do it now obviously yeah. we have our beliefs but like what about these people yeah, I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put these things for us even in this dunya. So, okay, there's food in this dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, you know, he says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وصحة. Allah doesn't burden a person more than they can bear, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, you know, food, this, that, women, whatever in this world, right? Men, whatever it is, right? So you have two options, halal or haram. So you can take food. Allah didn't tell you don't eat, right? Okay? You know, كُلُّ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ Right? Allah SWT says, eat from it, right? Um, we go to the story of Adam and Eve, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that eat uh, everything you want, okay? فَلَا تَقْرَبُ هَذِهِ شجر. But don't come close to this one tree. Only one. And, and kind of that is how dunya is almost like too, right? There's just so many things, like it's halal. But there's some exceptions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, hi, you know, like he says, as you please, ragadan, as you want, there's plenty, abundance, right? He told Adam and Eve. And he's, but he says, but this tree, don't get close to it, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, it's not a cliche statement to say that this dunya is a, is a test. So he has given us food, there's meat, there's this, there's that, there's chicken, there's fruits every single fruit pretty much i don't know of anyone that is haram everything is pretty much halal you know except for you know pork right and certain things um like predator animals certain animals specific that we don't really are going mm. to eat you know what i mean um other than that like I mean, everything is halal you know okay women are they not halal yes uh, it's you want one okay just have to do what the process I said two witnesses Mahar, and uh, you know you make the nikah hijab qabul your, your wali whatever and you uh, you know you get married you don't you're not good with one take two you're not good with two take three you're not good with three take four it's all good you know what I mean so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us something but there's certain limitations if you look at the limitations they're not so much it's people's mentalities when they come into Islam or they look at Islam or their condition, again, we talked, I think, yesterday about conditioning by society to feel like, oh my God, you know, it's like it's this scarcity type of mentality. We have, we, we don't have, everything's haram. Everything is not allowed. Everything is, it's, it's not. Everything is okay. Like things are just very nice, right? So you can, you know, choose money around and make money in halal, or you can steal or take riba or interest or whatever you want. Everything is available. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put this test on us. Just do it according to what I told you. I've given you plenty of options. Take that, right? And then if you insist to take the haram option, then that is a punishment. There's a sin. You know, so there's, alhamdulillah, Allah has given us. That's why, you know, we say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا ذَابِنَا Right? God give us in this world good things, the best things, hasana, you know, uh, and in the hereafter, Hasan, right? And this is the, the best dua, right? If we look in that surah. So, alhamdulillah, you know, Allah is, Allah is that's why he's ar-Rahman rahim you know? He didn't like, I don't know, he didn't make it so difficult. It is a test. There is difficulty. I know there's a lot. But, uh, again, in general, if we start things on a clear slate, on a clean slate, um, it is good. That's why the Sharia has been set in such a way that sometimes a bit strict because human beings as they you know children we're oblivious as we develop when we're little we need protection sometimes our parents fail to protect us because they don't understand they don't practice so then society protects you the sharia protects you the law protects right people are fighting the sharia and the law yet look what's happened look where our societies are going the decadence immorality and so on people have a problem they say oh the sharia is so strict but it's for a reason to protect the developing soul so that it takes a natural pathway of development without being, you know, uh, conditioned towards the wrong things. Like I'm sure, I'm not sure how many of you are con converts. I know Angel is a convert, right? Like the thing is people like myself and Angel, you know, growing up, we didn't, 
necessarily know what's right and wrong. So we're in a different situation, maybe in terms of, you know, what we tasted in the past. And it's quite difficult for people like us to, you know, to, to move through the world. It's, it's tough. It's not impossible, but it's much tougher by someone who's been protected by the Sharia, for example, and parents and family, and they kind of just growing up naturally, you know, they might have mistakes here and there, be exposed to certain things, obviously in the world, but I don't know, I'm talking to talk, maybe not talk about Angel, but talk about myself. Like when I grew up, you know, I was exposed to all kinds of things and no one said, oh, yeah, but it's wrong. You know, like my dad would be like, yeah, you know, get the girls, man. You know, you've got to represent, you know what I mean? You got to represent the, the family legacy and stuff like that. Right. So it's different, right? From a father who would tell you like, no, brother, you know, you got to take care. You got to protect yourself from marriage. This is an issue of ethics, of morality, of, you know, building a family, you know, it's different. You understand how the Sharia has a purpose of protection. So it's much difficult for people like us, but we can do it. Alhamdulillah, you know, Allah has given us, uh, you know, enough to, to be able to, to be happy. So mm-hmm. it's a test. And inshallah, may Allah make it easy for us to pass, you know. Life is short, man. Life is very short. I mean, bro, that reminds me, man. I'm just going to play devil's advocate for a bit because you said there's a lot of things here that are halal, uh, mm-hmm. except what's haram. But mm-hmm. obviously the other side, the opposing, they're going to look at it like, oh, everything's haram. So a lot of people might be like, okay, there's, and for those of you that don't know what I'm going to talk about, we'll explain it in a bit, but we talked about drugs before, but specifically there's this increasing new wave on, on these things called psychedelics. Now, yeah. when I say increasing as in this bringing it into the light of legality, or at least proposing it to be brought into the light of legality, because at least from my understanding in Canada and the States, most of these things are illegal and in most places in the world. I'm talking about things like uh, shrooms, acid, you know, LSD, DMT, these types of things. And a lot of people, believe it or not, have taken these things and have had spiritual experiences, right? Right. So they have these enlightenment, you know, or subjective self-proclaimed enlightenment. They have these things where they're like, oh, I had an ego death and now I'm more connected with the universe. I'm more present. But Allah tells us very plain and simple, any intoxicant, any mind altering substance, we should be forbid from so what do you what do you have to say to these people okay yes as the process and told us right that uh, you know every uh, intoxicant is khamar and every khamar is haram right and it's a, a very important principle in sharia because you extend that ruling to anything that kind of changes your mind um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. It's just not just like, you know, black and white, just like that, because there are certain, you know, issues that can be looked at. Um, however, you know, the word psychedelics, I mean, psycho, psyche from the soul, okay, and dolun, or it's a Greek term of, of having my, mind manifesting. So basically, um, uh, you know, allowing your mind, they say, to reach its true potentials or unlocking the true potentials of the mind. And many things, many people have talked about that, you know, I think recently also Jordan Peterson talked about it. Uh, others have talked about it. Brian Rose from London Real, he had, you know, a, quite a few guys that he brought in talking about psychedelics and he's gone through the Amazon and, and, and you know, and tried it and whatnot. And these are, these guys are the protégés of Dan Pena and all these guys, you know, a lot of these coaches and life coaches and, you know, people are just, taken out or challenging life and the, the status quo and the normal, you know, the, the, the standards and just developing themselves. Right. So of course the world is looking at some of these guys and it's all propaganda again. Right. Uh, they're wor- looking at these guys and seeing that, you know, kind of tying in, into masculinity. And we talked about yesterday, there's a lot of people who are sitting there wishing they could, or they could do things and they, they would have done things in their lives. They're sitting in their comfortable a couch the Prophet sent me on hadith tirmidhi uh, he said that uh, there'll be my time in my ummah where people will be reclining on their couch you know like couch potatoes right people are sitting there comfortable and they're you know opening netflix opening uh, you know social media and they're seeing these this rise of men who are saying you know what screw everything we're gonna like experience life we're gonna challenge everything um, you know we're just going to go out there and do it right so Look at the performer on the screen, the guys who are actually doing it, which is a very, very small percentage who are taking a leap and they're becoming courageous to do something about their life and they're just not accepting the nine to five slavery type of lifestyle. 
And uh, so the other ones, 99% of the people, these are maybe one percenters, you know, the 99, they're in the one percent, uh, 99 percentile. The other ones, the 99%, they're looking on the other side of the screen. They're saying, man, you know, wow, look at this guy. He's a real, wow, blah, you know, so they're being, you know, they're reading the books. They're, these guys are selling the books. These guys, the one percenters are, are selling their shows. They're getting the followers and whatnot. They're going around the world, filming everything. And the rest of the world is kind of sitting there wishing they could be there, right? They wish they could be like them or be them. So there's a lot of conditioning and that takes place. So there are studies, there are research, there is research on these drugs. Bottom line is, bro, that you see when you alter your state of mind, what happens is just like when you're depressed or when you're not in your real you know, state of, of functioning, um, you open yourself you're susceptible, stronger, or more to the influences of shaitan, right? So people experience having these like enlightenments and, you know, they'll, they'll con certain terms. And then obviously people are like, oh my God, ego, death, and this and that, wow, you know? But if you're like, what does that mean? Like, how do you know? How can you, how can you qualify that? How can you quantify that? How can you gauge that? Right. People don't question sometimes some of these statements. They're just like, wow, it sounds so amazing. Right. So, yes, there's been a lot of things that have been written again recently. And this is obviously something that we can debate on uh, with the people who are proposing these kind of models. But uh, I would say that is uh, the mind can be unleashed, can be unlocked through enlightenment via knowledge. Right. And it is a spiritual uh, thing that, you know, is, is experienced through revelation and through connecting with the Almighty through a clear path. Like, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, he has revealed, you know, the Quran, right? He says, There is no doubt. So I want to focus on that. There's no doubt. So, the spiritual awakening that I've had when I read the Quran is undoubtful because I see, I know, I understand, I connect. Well, when you start smoking up or you start taking certain things, there's a doubt in it. There's a doubt. You don't know where, where are these thoughts coming from? Is, so it's induced by the drug. You couldn't reach that enlightenment through your own potential because now you're getting external help. You can call it spiritual, but again, how, how do you check whether it's spiritual or not? Just because you feel it's very subjective. Spiritual enlightenment, visions, this and that. Why is it not hallucinations? See, these people, again, are thinking from an, even though they're calling it spiritual, is substance is based on, it's, it's materialistic. And materialism is linked to atheism in the end, right? But it's like the external use or the external intervention of substances to help you to cope with your freaking misery, that you're a freaking loser and you need to get some kind of, you know, substances to help you. Of course, drink alcohol, you get all of a sudden, oh, different, right? Because your mind is not working the right way, the way it was supposed to work, the way Allah SWT has created. Allah didn't create you with the need to drink alcohol or the ability, or you didn't, you know, as soon as you imagine, as soon as you come out of your mother, instead of giving you some milk, she gives you a shot of whiskey or something, you know, and all of a sudden you're like, Whoo, that's the best. Right. And then, no, it's not. You start drinking milk, you drink water, you eat food, you develop naturally. It's only when throughout life, you go through this misery of society. There's always conditioning that you should be happy and you should be this and you should be that and you should look like that and have an eight pack and have you know a, a back that looks like this and women should look like that then you start realizing man I, I feel miserable right and then instead of going for clear undoubtful knowledge of what your purpose in life is people start adventuring around and seeing things and you know trying to experience things and then they've you know come upon different cultures that have been doing certain things as part of rituals in their, you know, religions or whatever it is um, through different encounters, travelers and so on. And then like, Hey, that sounds pretty good. Like, I mean, these guys are living somewhere in an animal in the forest. They're not dealing with society's challenges. Yeah. Maybe they're hunting, maybe they have their own internal politics, but it's not like living 
in the world, you know, as the prophets did. It's not like living, um, you know, and dealing with, with the issues, the developments, the fitna, the, all these things that we see and we read throughout the Quran. So then you're basically realizing that, oh my God, you know, maybe this is a solution. So you're taking something external, injecting it, engulfing it, whatever it is. And then you have this so-called uh, experience. And then you, you feel so good because you kind of lost control and losing control. I mean, a lot of people like that because for once in their life, they feel like they, they can silence some of the miserable thoughts that they have or feelings or insecurities, right? And um, then they go out to others and they start promoting it through shows, through books, through this and that. And others get so excited by it. They're like, wow, you know, and they start connecting it to religion, start connecting it to things. And they start, even the Muslims say, well, why is it haram? Because you get closer to God, right? I mean, it's the same type of thing, uh, even though a little bit different, but what the Sufis, you know, used to do in Islam, right? Like even dervish is just, like spinning around, right? If you ever try to spin, okay, 20 times, you will feel that your mind now, because of the force that you're using, is going, you're going to feel dizzy. You're not feeling normal. It feels good, actually. It feels very good, right? So you're spinning around. And that's what they used to think, that you spin around, and that's where you get a, a this, this unique connection with your creator that no one else can do it, you know, unless you come to this tariqa and this way, and you sit with the sheikh, they'll teach you how fast to spin, how to spin, and how to, you know. And then you're like, the, the rational mind will say, wait a second, the Prophet didn't do that. He didn't spin and try to get his mind into a state where he gets to connect or have this higher experience with his creator. His, his connection with his creator was salah. You know, that's what he said. Qiyam, you know. A lot of these people do the drug, but they'll never wake up for Qiyam. They'll never wake up half an hour, one hour before Fajr. They don't have the strength. They need some substance to help them to reach, you know, some kind of state of enlightenment. So enlightenment is through knowledge. Enlightenment is through revelation, not through these substances that change your disposition, your mind. Yeah, it might feel good. I'm not denying that, that it's not going to feel good. You'll find a thousand excuses and definitely you'll, you'll, you'll be very susceptible to shaitan whispering, the jinns and human beings and other people. You know, people forget that there's a lot of sons of devils in this world who are going to tell you, yeah, take these things. It's good. I took it. It's really good. You know, you can have this amazing experience. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just don't, don't see it. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm an intellectual. I need to be, you know, these arguments make no sense. They're nice. They're ter termed very nice. There's a lot of movies, a lot of things, a lot of money has been invested in it. But to me, it's like I put it in the same, in the same uh, basket as LGBTQT, as, as promiscuity, as many other things, alcohol, other problems in the world that people want to silence the reason in them and just kind of do whatever the heck they, you know, mm -hmm. against what Allah has created them. Mm -hmm. I'm the yeah, I know. I want to hear your experience on it. Yeah, I was just about to jump in, bro. Brother, I think that was incredible. And I'm going to just slide a few things in here just to kind of piggyback off what you're saying, like uh, Rami likes to say. So, yes, when we take these things, because, I mean, obviously I was not a, a Muslim my entire life, so I have done a lot of things that, you know, are bad. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I'm proud or anything. But when someone yeah, takes, bro. yeah, man, it's when someone takes uh, one of these things, an intoxicant, we just call it an intoxicant, all right? But we could refer to it in all the different subcategories that Faya mentioned in the beginning. What it's doing is it's altering our neurochemistry, like our neurotransmitters. It's altering the levels that of which they are expressing or deeper or suppressing themselves, which causes you to experience an altered state of being an altered state of mind. And that's why people experience what they experience. But it's like, dude, you're talking about enlightenment. You're talking about ego death. You're talking about all these things where it's like the people who actually brought this to the table were people who don't even take the psychedelics like the yogis, the uh, Buddhists, 
and all these other people that are going into the crazy stuff that you hear what people are talking about when they take psychedelics, right? So again, we're talking here that you take it, it's altering your neurochemistry, making you feel this way, but you can also feel that being 100% sober. And then it's, it's almost like to say that this psychedelic or this intoxicant is uh, the equivalent of the forbidden fruit. Where it's like God says, okay, you can you can eat anything you want, you can have anything you want, just don't have from this tree, don't have the forbidden fruit. And it's like people will say, oh well, if this is altering my neurochemistry and I'm experiencing these uh spiritual experiences, then why can't I tell you? It's like, bro, it says it very clearly in the book. It says it very clearly. Do not take these intoxicants. Why? Because because it's you should have faith. Like it, if you believe the rest of the Quran, why would you not believe that part? That's you right. feel me? Where it's like right. if someone wants to doubt that, well, then it's like you're essentially doubting the rest of the book and the rest of the revelations. And then if you go and take the intoxicant yourself, you will see for yourself why the book was telling you not to take the intoxicant. Mm-hmm. And like, bro, I wanna, I just wanna throw in one crazy thing here. All right. So you know how. This is all referred to as the dunya. Yes. This is all the, uh, the simulation, the test. And um, you guys ever watch these, uh, these really fancy TVs that like it's so high definition that when you're watching a show, it looks fake. It looks like you're, you're there watching them like record it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So back in the day when I did partake in these things, I remember it would put me in in such a a hyper present state where I would look at things and it's almost like I could see how fake it all was. It looked so real that it looked fake. And I was like, oh, this is this isn't real. This isn't real. And I kept telling my friends like, yo, this isn't real. And then here I am, bro. I just wander upon the Quran or, or should I say I was guided to the Quran. And then the Quran is saying that this isn't real. This is a test this is the dunya and it's like again why does it say it in the book because it is yeah. the truth yes yeah, well so true and that's why like again you know just the word khamar you know like from khimar it's something that covers your head and your you know your mind so it's it's just just that the concept of altering your mind is is enough to make it haram and a lot of people i think forget the what's called the the first high you know a lot of people when they take these drugs they continue because the first time is never like the second time or the second time is never like the first Mm -hmm. time and the third time is never like the first time you're going to continue and you're going to try different ones and that's why people take psychedelics or any kind of drugs they don't stop at one kind they're not like oh this is my path i take this drug you know whatever it be lsd or something like that you know they're gonna be like i take this and that's it no they're gonna try and experience with other things because they're looking for that first experience and it doesn't happen. So yeah, someone is going to take it in their 20s and they're going to feel amazing, ecstasy, go to club, rave, whatever, all that, and thinking they're living it up. But once they, they reach 40 and 50, wait a second. So what's happening there? How come now things are different? Uh, how come like just anything, man, like, like steroids, you know what I mean? It's just not part of you. You know, my brother, you know, died last year because of that. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, what was the issue with him? Like he had this low self-esteem, you know, he, you know, as a child, he grew up, kids were making fun of him that he's scrunny. I could give a damn whether they, you know, I was scrunny. I was the same, even scrunnier than him. But I think just the way I looked at things were different. I couldn't care. And, you know, he was always like injecting and he was always, you know, he was huge and mashallah, he looked amazing. Yeah. But his heart was only at 50% and he didn't know it. So when he got a little virus and he got infected, he went to the hospital and he couldn't come out, you know, and his heart gave in, you know what I mean? So, yeah, like people need to look at this issue from, from many different perspectives, not just the fact that, oh yeah, we're going to have this amazing, you know, experience and connect spiritually. And, you know, this, this is all slogans to me, you know, people really need to become a bit deeper than that 
And, you know, you got to take care of your body. This body is an aman. Allah is giving you exactly everything you need. But you need to have that motivation is, is strong. You know, revelation is very important. Um, helping each other. Like, that's why, like, you know, I think that we men need, you know, support. That's why there's a concept of an ummah. That's why when we you know four of us talk, it's like you feel amazing, you know, because that ta'awun, that cooperation, that support is so important for males specifically, you know, that's how we are. We're always, you know, soldiers of an army. We were always warriors for thousands of years. We're never just lone wolves, you know, there's, we're always together and, and pushing each other and encouraging each other, getting that high spirit, you know, iman. And now we're alone, right? So, yes, I believe that it's important to have a high state of mind, awareness, um, you know, a spiritual high. But it comes natural. It comes from, you know, us talking to each other, inspiring each other, reading and seeking knowledge, uh, moving our bodies, uh, eating well, um, having a purpose, man. That's the whole point, right? Like, I don't know. Like, when I wake up, like today, I was so tired, man. I haven't been sleeping well. I told you guys I had the, you know, the rib right problem. And I can't, you know, when you have like a broken rib, you can't really sleep properly. It's been like two weeks now. Alhamdulillah, it's much better now. But I felt like, man, you know, but when you have a purpose, I'm like, I got to do something. I got something to do this morning. You know what I mean? And I think that's the problem. A lot of people don't have anything to do. So then just go back to bed and just don't have a purpose. So when you have a purpose, you have that high motivation you feel like you're on a mission you i don't know it's just you do reach that high state of 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 of, of you know iman of faith of of existence of purpose and it does feel amazing you know what i mean and that's what's you know motivation and iman right like you get for a jog you start seeing the change in your body you, you start reaching your goals uh you know uh, you start having that self-talk, you know, that the Sahab and the Prophet told us about, you know, this muhasaba, you know, this, this, uh, this, you know, you, you basically, it's very important. A lot of men don't know how to have self-talk. They don't know how to have that internal dialogue, you know, where you challenge yourself. So I think we have everything we need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's just a matter of, of doing it and helping each other, coaching each other. And I think one of you said that you're coaching, you know, the other brother, right? That's the whole point, right? We're supposed to, you know something, I don't know. I know something, you don't know. And we cooperate and we work together. And I think a lot of men are doing psychedelics and they're do, doing all kinds of weird stuff these days. You know, you hear all kinds of stuff. It's because they're lacking purpose, but their fitra, their natural disposition is dynamic. It needs to do it. It just... Like it needs to move. It just doesn't know where to move. There's no guidance to, to where to go. So it's always moving, but it's like moving back, moving forward, taking one step forward, two step backward. It's just kind of crazy, right? But for us, we know where we have to move. You know, on the Sirat al Mustaqim, you gotta move forward. You have a destination and you're not just trying, okay, let me try this one. Let me try that. We have a clear print, you know, and, and it does change things. It does. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel. I feel amazing. I feel great. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. Like I'm tired. Sometimes I get problems. There's issues at work, this, that. I've been moving around the world for the past, you know, uh, more than a decade. But it's, life is, is beautiful, man. Life is beautiful. It's just amazing with all these challenges and all the ups and downs. And this is just amazing. Alhamdulillah, you know. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, man, I agree 100%. Um, I can only speak from a, a male perspective and say that, like, as men, we really do need purpose. But, I mean, it, it goes the same for women, you know, because there are women that are watching these podcasts. And, like, I get it, you know, women need purpose too. But, like, speaking as a man, like, it's just something else for us. And like you said, it's in our, did you say fitna? Fitra. Fitra, fitra is like our, fitra our, our yeah, like our natural disposition, our, our okay. DNA, you know? It's yeah, yeah, DNA. yeah. Okay, understood. So, yeah, like as a man, like we we strive so much to have purpose. 
that if we don't have purpose, we seek purpose in all these other things, whether it be um, playing video games nonstop, exactly. whether it be some random hobby or whether it be taking these intoxicants. Because it's like you said, it's like, well, you're doing it because you're not experiencing anything. So like essentially no one does psychedelics for actual knowledge and, and growth and wisdom. They're doing it to experience something because what they're experiencing is not enough. And if you don't have purpose, then you obviously aren't experiencing enough, bro. It's like when you were talking about how you're doing martial arts, mashallah, bro, when you're sparring at the end of that sparring session, how do you feel? Yeah. I'm doing bro, like out of man, this bro. world, bro, out of this world. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of men are lacking that. And not even just talking about the martial arts, but just purpose in general. And that's why, like... That's why they stray to all these different ways. That's right. 100%, man. 100%, 100%. I totally agree. 100%. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given us, uh, you know, this amazing, you know, this amazing purpose. And, you know, you said also about women. I, I like to add to that. That's true. But you see, I, I feel, I feel like Adam was created first. And there's a reason for that. You know, women don't like this talk, but when they realize it, when they submit to understanding the hierarchy, then I believe that, again, their fitra, their DNA will function properly. So when men fix themselves, then naturally women will have to fix themselves. They align, you know. Right now, I, I do blame a lot of men. I do work with a lot of men. I get some, I get very tough with certain men uh, and, and call them out because, you know, and myself as well. I'm very tough with myself. I'm not saying that I was born like this and I just lived my whole life on this, you know, path. I had times where I slipped big time. You know what I mean? But, but if we fix ourselves, men, and that's why it is our responsibility. That's why Adam was created first. I think naturally women will just fall in line. Right now they're running around loose because we didn't fix our problems. Our house is not in order. Our issues as men are not in order so that allows them to mess about and then they're as i think one of you said right this negative feedback right so they're messing about messing us up and we becoming weaker and there that allows them to mess about even more mm -hmm. and the whole you know dynamics uh changes you know and, and a lot of women are realizing that bro. that's the crazy thing that's the amazing thing people tell me bro what are you talking about are you kidding me you're gonna get either arrested or something's gonna happen someone's gonna stab you whatever you know what and i'm like but I don't see, I see women coming around and saying, you know what is so right. I, as much as I hear it, it's so right, you know? And they start looking like for this kind of men that we are, you know, talking about, you know, this kind of model, the, the Muslim alpha man, the Khalifa type of, you know, guy who's going to be the leader, who's going to be the strong man, you know, yet he's, he's not, uh, you know, doing injustice. He's not doing dhulm. And there's this is because it's part it's inside it's buried in their DNA. So women have to also have a purpose, no doubt, but it's not the same as men. And I think that's the problem. We have left a huge void in this dunya as men. So now all these empty spaces, women are starting to fill them in. You know what I mean? So now they're finding purpose and being out there, you know, being like a soldier or something. And I just saw this uh report where there was a training uh, there was a training uh program in the desert for like three months you know men and women training to be marines and sadly i mean at all levels women significantly if you know science and statistics significantly means like a huge difference underperformed okay compared to men why why are you there in the first place you know, why are you there just to prove that you got to be like men or that we are, you know, not doing our job or whatever, you know, you have your niche where Allah has created you with certain skills that are just beautiful. You know, I know women will be like, oh my God, what is this chauvinistic type of speech? But this is what it is. I'm very, I stand by, it. you know, raising children, man. It's like nurturing human souls. What more beauty and, and and purpose do you want than that you know like 
Can, mm-hmm. We cannot. Men, men don't. We, we, we do it, but we're not as like it's we can't do it the way a woman does. And I was looking at the word nurture. We are educating our children. We need to, especially our boys. Uh, we fathers have a huge role. But the woman has this divinely given gift that she hates now. She's been made to hate by the feminist movement, by the LGBTQT. And, and they hate when you say, even just the me saying you should be a, a mother, a housewife, and you should find purpose in that beauty of, of taking care of this cradle that's going to nurture generations of warriors to come, righteous men and good women, righteous women. They hate that. They're like, why? And they don't know why. Mm-hmm. You know, they're only going to find out why when they're 45 and 50 <laughs> and they're alone and they start have to join stuff like, you know, trad wives movements, you know, and subhanAllah, the non-Muslims are waking up. The African mm-hmm. women are waking up and saying, what the heck have we done? What have we done? Oh, girls, young girls, and you're 15, 14, we're watching Netflix being conditioned. Don't do the same mistakes we have done. Check it out, sisters. Check out the, the traditional wife movement. Yeah, people are fighting in this and that, but that's the reality. Check out what the African sisters are saying, waking up and saying, man, you know, colonization and, and, and westernization is destroying our men, destroying our families. They're promoting polygyny, bro. The African Christian sisters are big, big, you know, promoters of, of polygyny. And then you have, you know, these... Uh, you know, uh, our, 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 our sisters who are, you know, what is it, like a Salafi feminist, you know, uh, you know, who's getting all the, you know, writing articles for <laughs> Muslim matters or whatever, you know, and then, then you know, trying to, oh, it doesn't work, polygyny, you know, people are going back forth, trying to attack, trying to smash it. It's not about that or this, man. It's just about the what's going on in, in the world, you know. Women need to find purpose in what Allah created him to find purpose. And men need to mm-hmm. find purpose in what Allah has given them the skills to find purpose. And as much as we're going to fight that, we're never going to be happy because you're mm-hmm. not, it's like wearing shoes that are tight. You know, if you have a, like I have size, I'm, I'm size 12 and a half, you know, like if I wear size 11 or 11 and a half, even 12 is going to rub me. I'm not going to be able to perform properly. But you're wearing shoes, bro. Be happy, huh? That's what people say. <laughs> but you, you have a, a life. You have one. You have. You're okay. Yeah, but I can't function properly. But you have one wife. But you're okay. I can't function properly, bro, because it's not what fits me. You know what I'm not. Everyone wears size twelve, you know, and half shoes or whatever. But if you're gonna wear size eleven on a twelve and a half foot, you can't function properly. If you're gonna wear pants that are too tight, you can't move properly. You can't. You know. You can't. So people just need to realize that Allah has created us in a certain way and we can, you know, excel in that field. And that field is quite vast. It's quite vast. We don't have to get out of it and be like, well, let me see what the girls are doing on their side. Oh, I think I should wear some of these, you know, uh, you know, clothes and start, you know, do my nails or something like that because I find purpose in that. You're confused, man. Confused. That's why the scholars define this homosexuality and these kind of things as confusion. You know, people are confused. <laughs> They're crossing over on the other side. You know, they're confused. You know, people mm, are. Facts, man. Nice. All the things you said so far, I just want to note some of them. So, you. We don't even have to have that thing you were talking about, how people have differences of opinion or I feel this or I feel like heaven shouldn't be this. See, that's subjective. If you guys just just stop talking, sit back and just look at reality, look at history, you could see that just like Brother Gabriel said, all of men, all of the prophets were men, were naturally leaders. And for women that are like, okay, um, why should women be the nurturers? Why should women do this? I could work a job too. I could be a CEO too. I could own that company too. Yeah, but look at look at look at the natural state that y'all are in. You a, a kid grows in you, a baby grows in you, a baby needs you. You are naturally, by virtue of being a biological woman, the only one capable of raising and nurturing that kid while it's inside you. I can't do that. Gabriel can't do that. Anhel can't do that. 
Rami might be able to do that. Now I'm playing. Rami can't do that too. <laughs> Bro, I'm just throwing a stab at you because it's been almost 40 minutes and you haven't said anything so far. Been so mute. either you're super, you know, saturated with thoughts or you got no thoughts. But either way, I'm going to let you, you know, do your you do your contribution soon because, you know, it's only fair. Um, yeah, so it makes, it literally makes no sense when women are like, oh, come on, like, why should I be the nurturer? It's like, I can't. You were made to do that. And I was here. I'm here as a man. Because a woman, my mother, decided to, you know, have a kid and she got pregnant and she nurtured me. So it literally makes no sense. You yourself, the woman, you wouldn't be here if your mom didn't nurture you and do that. So come on. You want to know what it is? Hmm. Women are out here trying to be Mulan and guys are out here trying to be white knights. (laughs) 100%, man. 100%. And, And Netflix... I know there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, movies like you know cuties and all this stuff and it's it's basically this narrative that the the Eastern woman is oppressed, the Muslim woman is oppressed, and Western ideology is the only thing that can free her and liberate her because there's this narrative that they need liberation, and then they do all these things and then they dye their hair purple and they shave their heads and they go out with their armpits hairy and you know wearing dresses like wearing clothes like a man and then they're 40 and then they're like yo i've been cucked by society i'm wrong this is this is not the way but it's like you spend the last 20 years telling other women who are more vulnerable and at a young age and more you know higher neuroplasticity to adopt that type of propaganda and it just it just leeches it just it just goes from them uh, I, I don't mean to cut in here. And unfortunately, I did not contribute very much today, but um, my class has started, so I do have to go, unfortunately. Um, Brother Gabriel, may Allah bless you. Well, uh, it's it been a nice tremendous year. honor. The amount I've uh, you know been able to reflect on and learn just the past uh, 24 hours is, is amazing. So may Allah you know, reward you, Habibi. Hey, Allah, man. May Allah bless you, bro. I mean, Allah. Alhamdulillah, man. Good luck with your class, man, because it's it's through classes, it's through your research, through your science, through your understanding and, and experience, bro, that you're able to contribute what you do to our podcast. So keep doing you, stay on your path, keep seeking knowledge, and by the grace of Allah, you're going to contribute to a podcast more than me and Anha are doing in that aspect. So yeah, yeah, go, I, I, go I, I, eat something, bro. Listen, I really, I really like, uh, you know, you guys, man. Mashallah, you guys are, it's, this is podcast. It's just so natural, you know, it's so organic, you know. Yeah. It's like, we're just chilling and just talking, you know. It's, it's, I like it, you know. Sometimes certain things are so like scripted, you know, like, hey, brother, yeah. what do you think? Brother, what do you think? So, yeah. I, I, yeah, I like, I like this. It's really cool. <laughs> it feels natural. You know? It's like, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. that was the goal. Yeah. All right, Rami. Yeah, God bless you all. Well, again, it was an honor. All three of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa salam. Wa alaikum wa salam.